All right, let's talk about the second fear footage film, The Curse of the Tape. Now, this is a film I wasn't really looking forward to because if you saw my review for the other one, you know I wasn't big on it outside of the premise that this house reappeared on a block out of nowhere and everyone started calling into the police um, and a cop came to investigate that. So that wraparound segment I just thought was fantastic, but it was an anthology where I didn't really care for any of the anthology segments. Now, this film, I was, I, I was, I was up last night, I needed a film to watch that was fairly short, and I was like, you know what, I already watched the first one, we might as well watch the second one, it's a 2020 movie, I'm knocking out like every 2020 movie, so let's throw this thing in and see if this is any better than the first one. Was it? Absolutely. fucking lutely yes. Yes. I really enjoyed this. I really enjoyed this. I'm shocked by that, because it almost makes me want to go back and watch the first one. But this one just works for me so much better. And there's a lot of reasons why. Now, right off the bat, though, um, okay, a couple things. Number one, the acting is not good at all. So prepare yourself for that going in. If you're somebody who can't look past extremely amateur acting, like acting that where it feels like the people are reading lines off of cue cards and the words that are written there aren't really natural, to your speech pattern. See, I always tell people, like, if you're going to write something, if you're going to write a script, if you're going to... Always talk aloud when you write your dialogue in your script. Read it with somebody. Read it back and forth. Have them read it. Especially have someone else read it to you. You'll see what feels natural and what does not feel natural. You'll hear it and you'll be like, no one talks like that. There's a lot of no one talks like that in this movie. There's a lot of like, oh man, that's that was rough dialogue and delivered very roughly too. But honestly, I mean, did it bother me? Sort of. Does it take you out of the film? Definitely, because you're, you're noticing it and you're like, ah, I know this is acting. Whatever, fine. That all being said, this film has something going for it so, so well, and that is the premise of the film. Much like the first film had that fantastic premise of the house appearing out of nowhere on this block out you know that it it, um, it disappeared or it was uh, demolished years ago whatever and it came back so in this film they take one of the characters from one of the segments from the first film and this guy finds this footage and he says what the fuck that's me on the footage but that's not me. The guy that's in this is in this film is is saying he's me. He's saying he's my name. He's got my face. He's talking about my daughter. He's all, but I did not shoot this. I don't know what any of this is. I'm not dead or missing. Like like at the end of this. So what in the hell is going on here? So he contacts and and tracks down some of the other people in the video who are also alive and real, and he tries to convince them to come with him to investigate this. He gets one of them to agree, and they go and they try to investigate how the hell this is possible. How are they on footage that they didn't shoot, that they have no memory of, a, and where, you know, crimes are committed? Is this footage real? Is this fake? Was it, you know, whatever. And so they go to investigate that. Fantastic premise. This reminds me of something like Grave Encounters 2, um, or even Blair Witch, where the footage is real within that within that world um, and so they play off of that and you watch like the first movie through there which is perfect for found footage it makes sense right it's found footage and, and people would be able to watch that movie within their universe I mean it's really the only subgenre that I can think of um, outside of like super meta shit but found footage is very meta and so these characters get to interact with the film because that film is real in their world. And it's supposed to be real in our world. Obviously it isn't, but you know what I'm saying. So that's pretty cool. And the, the fact that this director, this writer, plays off of that, takes that fun, um, you know, he, he has that ability, that fun ability, to be able to draw from 
I can use footage from my first one and then play off of that because of found footage. I just think, it think it's, it's just like the first one, I think it's a really smart, cool idea. And it really had me intrigued. Like when it started like that, this is not an anthology at all. This is just an investigation film of one of the characters from the first one trying to figure out how the hell he's in a film that he never was in. That premise is fantastic. I mean, it really is. Now, the horror in this is really good. Much better than the first one. Now, they overdo some things. No doubt about it. Most of the scares in this movie come from camera turn reveals. So, you'll see this where the camera pans this way. What's that? And then it pans back. And then it pans this way. And then it pans back. And there's something not there. And then there's something there when it pans back. You know? And they do that for the majority of the scares in this movie. Now, are they effective? Mostly they are, yeah, mostly they are. So can I knock the film for it? Yes and no. I think it's successful, albeit repetitive. So even though it's working, I don't know if it's okay to continue to keep, like tap, you know, going back and drawing from the same well, because I feel like people will lose interest but at the same time I'm sitting there like but they were mostly effective so I don't know I, I don't know how to feel about that one but I, I just thought that they could have come up with a couple more ways to uh, to have some of the scares not that they're all that way but the majority of them are um, another scare tactic that they used in this film that they used a little too much is loud noise jump cuts so something will be happening and it'll be some tense, scary moment where the guy thinks he might see something, whatever. And then it just like, it just like, bam, jump cuts to someone like washing their hands with the faucet on. And so the faucet is extremely loud. Like they crank up the audio to like 10. So like it'll jump from that to that and it'll be startling, but it won't be anything that you're supposed to be startled by. It'll be running water over somebody's hands or something. And they've used that a few times. So loud noise, jump cuts. And I feel like that's just cheap. I don't like, I don't like when, when audiences are startled with loud bangs and sounds, especially if they're not coming from anything menacing or threatening. That's, I don't know, that's just cheap shit to me. So that one I do have a, a discrepancy with, for sure. Another issue I have with every found footage film I think I've ever seen in my fucking life. Um, and it wasn't that bad here. Honestly, it's, it's seldomly used and it's never really used in the typical way that it's used, but it's like video distortion. When you're watching a found footage movie and they give you cop-outs because they're like, oh, you know, it, this is where the video became distorted. So we should be seeing something here, but we're not because, you know, the, the footage is scrambled. Oh, too bad, right? Oh man, let's keep it real though. It, it feels real because the, sco the footage is scrambled, whatever, fuck that. This happens in here a little bit, but it's never used to cover anything up. It's never used to be like, oh, well, you know, you should be seeing something here, but video distortion. That doesn't happen, really. There is some, but it's usually just randomly inserted. It doesn't seem to serve any purpose like it typically does. So I'm not, I'm actually kind of, I guess that isn't a knock as much as that's maybe a praise in a way where they use it, but they don't use it in the, in the bullshit way that most people use it. Um, and then the other thing that was annoying the fuck out of me, and this was a, um, a character choice, plot of choice, whatever. And this was kind of unforgivable for me and it was taking me out of the movie and it was getting me angry at the film. So one guy keeps seeing a bunch of shit and he's there with another guy. And even though he has this shit on film even though this guy should be aware of these things. And there's no reason for him not to tell this guy. But he never does. He never does throughout the whole fucking film. He keeps seeing all this crazy, unexplainable, wild, out there, nutso shit. And I think that the writers wanted, or the writer, I think there's only one, I think it's the same guy who writes and directs, but whatever. I think he wrote himself kind of into a corner because it was like, well, I want to show a bunch of scary shit, but I also don't want one of my characters to become too wise and privy to things. Otherwise, how will I not have him just run for his life? Because he's already kind of 
um, you know, not all that trustworthy and uh, trusting, not trustworthy, trusting of the guy he's there with because he doesn't even know him and he's on edge and he could leave at any moment. So like any reveal to him. And I guess you could argue that's why the character doesn't, the, the main character doesn't tell this guy. But to me, it's just lazy bullshit. Like it's like, you're not going to tell people that you just saw this ghost. You're not going to tell people that this just happened. Come on. Especially the person that's supposed to be there with you and you're investigating that something that's supposed to be supernatural, essentially. And you're going to sit there and not tell them that you saw something. Like, come on, the fuck out of here. That was annoying. But, man, it, I'm telling you, if this has no budget, like zero budget, like I had heard, I think that's the first film, though. But I'd be curious what the budget is on this. This is an extremely efficient found footage film. Like, there's a lot of super creepy, eerie moments. And there's a lot of good startles throughout this. Yeah, they're kind of cheap jump scares here and there. But they're actually pretty effective and pretty well um, orchestrated. Like, when I was watching it, I was like, that was really cool. And how that must have been really clever editing techniques. And it, this is a giant step up from the first one, in my opinion. Like... This is a really good found footage movie with bad acting. And the first one was a pretty pretty subpar found footage movie with bad acting. So for me, man, wow. I am down as... I can't even believe I'm saying this, but I am completely down for a Fear Footage 3. I would absolutely jump on to a uh, you know, crowdfunding kind of Kickstarter or something. Throw them whatever... 20 bucks or something for the blu-ray or whatever absolutely man this is this is really this is such a giant step up that i'm like all right let's like ride that wave now that this guy's got some experience under his belt and and he killed like he killed it with this one in comparison to the first one like what would the second one look like you know i'm uh, yeah i'm down as fuck to watch one so if uh if this if the filmmaker is watching man you're in the right path right now. You got a good trajectory. Go with it. You did fantastic with this one, man. So keep keep those creative juices flowing. And uh, I look forward to seeing what you do next. I hope there is a Fear Footage three. And if not, uh, I'll look I'll look I'll look out for for this next film because I thought this was a damn good one. Just get better actors. Like just take your money and put it towards better actors. Don't hire your friends. If this had good acting in it. Man, this is fucking good, man. Like, there's some really creepy shit where there's like this piano scene that's really creepy. There's um, a lot of sweet sleepwalking stuff. Um, a lot of, you know, it has a lot of technical issues that I'm trying not to point out or pick on because this is such a no budget movie that, like, you know, um, sound design, stuff like that. It, it needs work, but man, this is a good effort. This is a really good effort. Like, if. If my friends came to me and were like, dude, we made a movie. And when I watched that first one, I'd be like, oh, that was a good effort, good try. And then they brought me this next. I'd be like, dude, guys, whoa, holy shit. Like, you really stepped up your game. Like, good fucking, wow, okay. Like, we need to, like, ride this success and, and go into a third movie with, with how much of a giant leap up. Anyway, all right, I'm going to stop harping on that. but Or not harping, but I'm going to stop... Uh, you know, going on about that, so so, so to speak. Um, yeah, damn, I, I'm just, I'm shocked that I liked this movie so much, but I really, really did. I really, really did, and I would watch it again, absolutely. In fact, I would watch the first one again, and I think you absolutely need to watch the first one, though, for sure. Well, I, I guess they, they play off of it enough, but I think it's cool because you get to see a lot of callbacks to the first one. That's another one. That's another thing in this movie. You get a decent amount of callbacks to the first one where there were scenes and it kind of plays out like paranormal activity in that way where they like go back to different locations and whatnot and there's like looped things and it's cool man this is a really cool film i really like this a lot i mean i'm i'm you know i'm singing its praises right now i'm impressed this is a cool movie all right anyways let me know if you guys watch it I'll be curious on if you guys think I'm fucking crazy. They're both shit. You can't look past the bad acting. Whatever. I don't care. This movie's fucking rad. That's what I'm saying. Adios.